Hey guys, welcome to Camping with Steve. For uh, years now, people have been saying, get an e-bike, uh, where's your e-bike? Why not drive an e-bike? Well, I looked at them, the price was formidable. Uh, even the cheap ones, the price was formidable. So I picked up uh, an old CCM Canadian Tire mountain bike and they sell the kits to convert them. Uh, they're like 330 bucks US. Got a trailer on the back with an obscene amount of battery capacity. And I'm just kind of back roading it uh, to a place that I think should be quite good. Got a bunch of gear loaded up and we're gonna camp for the night. When we get there, I'll do a rundown on the bike. But so far, um, things are coming along pretty good. Um, cows don't seem to like it one little bit, oh, but that's okay. Onto a secondary highway, so we at least have pavement now. A little better than that gravel. I'm really scared of stuff falling out of the back there. But whatever happens, happens. Um, I'll just have to backtrack if something falls out. And yeah, initial test run of this thing. So far, I'm impressed. Clicks along about 30 kilometers an hour, pulling all this stuff and me around. So, yeah, can't be that bad. Just pulled over here. It looks like I've gone 39 and a half kilometers so far. And when this thing's on the level ground on pavement, it does like 38 kilometers an hour. So we're getting up there uh, with some good speed, especially towing all this. I think there's a little town right ahead. Um, maybe stop in, see what's there, and then continue on the way. Kind of racing the, the sun here. I don't want to be out on uh, the roads at night, so. We'll keep going and poke in here or there what we can. There's not a whole lot here. A little um, grocery, lottery, video, post office, gas station, and liquor store. Um, it's like a curling rink or uh, community hall over there. There is a stampede ground um, and what looks to be a little restaurant up there. And I'm gonna head up the road. Uh, it's a little bit of a busy intersection, so hopefully uh, there's not too much traffic going up the road. Right now, time-wise, I think we've got another another hour and a half or so until sunset, which is the perfect time to be rolling into where I plan to roll into. So let's go. Nice little river here, or a creek, and uh, I think the mosquitoes are gonna be bad, so I've got my tools with me for that. The pavement highway here, we're off of that. Uh, just gotta go down this no exit road, but it looks like somebody's parked up there. Mind you, I'm not doing anything wrong yet. So when the coast is clear, I'll just drive across and see what's happening on this uh, gravel road. Totally the car's coming, so I'm just gonna Wait for them to go whichever way they will. Oh, great. Uh, two bars of service here. Oh, it's better than, better than nothing. Ah ha ha, just like that. I'm gonna have to reinforce this trailer a bit if I'm gonna do more roads like this, which I will. It's designed for 100 pounds, probably on nice level uh, paved roads. So taking them down back roads, flying down at 30, 40 K an hour, it's probably gonna make short work of it. But this is a, an initial test run and I've learned a few things. We'll go over that.
just the ticket. Uh, natural area, boundary. There's an old weathered sign there. Now these are used for hunting sometimes. Uh, there are a lot of restrictions on them, um, like no camping. So we'll have to be sneaky. Um, it's a good sign when we start to see these signs behind me. They're for uh, quad and uh, skidoo trails. So the area does get used recreationally, um, albeit not for camping. So should be a spot, judging from the maps that I checked out. And uh, let's go. Ooh. That trailer's really taking a beating. I'm gonna have to probably tighten up some stuff when we stop. Okay. Well, here's a wide open space. There is what looks to be a disconnected oil well there. And a whole lot of uh, mosquito infested looking uh, shrubs around the edge. I'm gonna get away from this thing and away from the road and we'll take stock of the situation and try to find a spot uh, as far from the water as I can. There's nowhere far from the mosquitoes, but the first thing's first, take off this. Not required anymore. I didn't want to get squished by a car, so it's always good to be seen, but it's not good to be seen right now. And uh, yeah, I can see the, the pond down there. Yeah, uh, yeah, a lot of standing water. That's where mosquitoes are going to come from. So I got mosquito coils today. Um, I haven't used them in ages, but they're the exact same. Uh, ingredients as the thermocells. So if I start uh, start up a bunch of those, we should be in uh, should be in good shape. When I started putting this uh, setup together, I said, oh yeah, lots of room, it'll fit. Everything will fit. And then by the end, it's all bungee strapped on, of course. So we'll evaluate this, get it a little more organized. Um, I don't need all the batteries that are in here. <laughs> I'll show you that uh, in a sec, but it's the only way I could get the 36 volts was to put three of these big ones together. On a short trip like this, overkill, overkill. Off bug spray. Begin with that. Okay. Mosquito coils, the same stuff that's in the thermocells. Uh, except I could find these and I couldn't find uh, the refills for the thermocell. These uh, small rural areas, they don't really carry a lot of thermocell refill stuff. So, um, yeah, light one of these up, at least one of them up. The thermocell is far more convenient but this, I'll just uh, set it up on top of these highly explosive lithium batteries. Actually, these are uh, lithium iron phosphate. They're not that, uh, not that dangerous. Okay. Someone's coming for sure. Um, if I duck down here, I'll see if I see the vehicle. Perfect. Uh, can't see a thing. Uh, tucked away nicely here. There's a little hill. Perfect. The basic rundown on this bike was uh, the front wheel has a little motor in it and the kit came with this motor, this little thing, the two brakes which uh, replace the ones that uh, are on there and uh, throttle control. Give me that. 
It does come with like a pedal assist sensor I couldn't fit on this bike and a little control module on the back. So basically I just switched those out, switched the wheel. Um, I was starting to film it, but there was a lot more profanity uh, than I enjoy in my videos. So I'm not like a technical channel. I'm more into the e-bike for just the sheer adventure of it and not to show off uh, tech reviews. I actually had to Google um, and YouTube a fair bit of setting this up because the instructions weren't all that clear. With the batteries, each one of these is like a 12 volt lithium ion phosphate battery um, at 100 amp hours. So I've got them in series, so I got 36 volts at 100 amp hours, which equals 3,800 watt hours of power, which is really overkill for an e-bike. Um, the motor draws 500 watts, so it would run for about seven and a half hours straight, giving me 220 kilometer range without touching the pedal, which is about 140 miles. Um, that uh, is quite impressive, and the way it was going, pulling this load, it's like it wasn't even there. I was too scared to look at what the speedometer was reading, uh, but I'll look at that later. Definitely no Widowmakers here. Uh, the beavers have been chewing these trees down like crazy. And uh, I brought the camo tent today because I wasn't sure if I'd be able to find trees for the hammock. And let's get this done while there's daylight. I'm pretty militant about keeping the screen zipped up. The only downside with um, the tent is I gotta bring a stool. In the hammock I can just kind of sit underneath of it. But uh, this is not bad. Step one accomplished. Time for step two. Oh yeah, all the bumpy roads. <laughs> I forgot about that. That's uh, one of the things to consider uh, on a long bike trip is uh, carbonation. I got that mosquito and then it flew away. Time for the infamous stealth test. While we've still got daylight and I don't need a flashlight, I'm gonna do this. Uh, we got our old well head over here. Just walking on over. Anybody driving along that road, if they pull up, this is what they'll see. Not bad. Things are getting chilly. Considering it's a natural area, there's the possibility of nature. So, bear spray with me, of course. And I'm sure it would work on a pack of coyotes or something like that, or a cougar if it was really causing me enough trouble. So, keep this handy by. And, well, Things are really starting to uh, cool down so much that the dew is settling on, on this. I'm going to get the sleeping bag into the tent and get that lofting up. It will possibly be a rainy night.
I thought I heard something. Wildlife. There's no way I could have pedaled this with just my little legs, um, but I knew the batteries were a lot of the weight. So yeah, it probably could be done, but I love having the battery back up because one, I got a bad hip, and two, on those rainy days where you just want to get there quick, which tomorrow might be. I don't have a lot of rain gear, but it's only supposed to drizzle a little. Um, we'll see how that goes. A little fog rolling in, that will provide a blanket of extra stealthiness. Just a couple of planes in the middle of nowhere flying real close to each other. Wonder what that's about. So the cycle touring, bike packing, whatever you want to call it, um, it's a strange feeling of independence and vulnerability. Like I have everything I need. Uh, if it were to dump down rain, I could hide in my tent, everything would stay dry, and I could just wait for it to clear up. Uh, but at the same time, I'm in the middle of nowhere, right? It's, I do have cell service, so if there's an emergency, I can call for somebody. But I remember this feeling from when I did the other trip. It's just, you know, you are very independent, but also very, very out in the open, very vulnerable. So it's a strange combination of, uh, of sensations. I should cook something to eat um, a few hours ago, probably. I was waiting for some wildlife that didn't really show up. I'm not going to cook right beside the camp because there could be bears, I guess. Um, and I'm definitely not going to cook by that explosive looking shack over there. So I'm just going to wander down a little ways here. a part of the stove. Uh, that probably rattled loose in the cart back there. So that will make these uh, smokies a little bit trickier. Okay, I'm not going to find that tonight. Um, it's likely somewhere on the highway between where I left and where I'd set up the camp, or possibly somewhere between where I'm sitting and where the camp is. And I just don't have the light to find that, uh, but I'll try, I guess, in the morning. It uh, looks like uh, I'll be having a breakfast tomorrow somehow, uh, which is unusual, but there's not going to be a dinner tonight. I don't want to start a fire um, because I'm trying to be stealthy, and I really probably shouldn't be camping here. Um, that would give me away. So we're... Uh, we're going to bed. I could eat a bun or something, but that's not a, a very nice meal. The dew is settling on everything, including the lens. That's uh, actually, I keep having to wipe that off, but uh, just walking over here, my shoes are soaked. So probably about time to wrap up in the blanket, assess things in the morning, maybe check out that restaurant on the way back, or um, see what they have at the store. I could do a little picnic um, on the way back, and then... We'll, we'll have a good adventure. <laughs> Just getting everything covered up. Nighty Rudy, I'll try to get some sleep here and we'll assess the probably soggy situation in the morning and see what we can do for some food. Uh, always an adventure just about asleep and I woke up and I thought there was a bear outside but it was my stomach growling that is gonna be a long night rain it is just gonna hang tight here it's still quite early uh, it's not not even five in the morning yet so I'm gonna sleep a little more and hopefully this rain clears up. I'm 
there you have it. When in doubt, wait it out. Uh, stopped raining, and it took a lot of hunkering down, but we did it. Things are drying off nicely, and uh, we can start packing up. Out of the tent, it is a little chilly, I must confess. Uh, it's not going to be super pleasurable riding through this uh, on a bicycle at 25 miles an hour. So I'm going to take it a little easy on the way back. Um, the way here was kind of speed testing the thing, seeing what it could do, racing the sunset. But now that I got a good indication, I can, uh, I can pretty much just take it easy on the way back. Really hoping that restaurant we drove past is open. And uh, I don't care what they have. If they don't have breakfast, I'll have dinner. I think it's a Chinese place too, so it's, whatever it is, I'll eat it. And then uh, I'll keep my eye open on the way back for a part of a missing <laughs> stove. I was always a little iffy on the whole e-bike concept because I thought the range was pretty limited. But um, you can mod them up for, for, for some extreme ranges. I'm going to start this up. Last night it was showing still 100% battery after going probably 50 kilometers. So I have no doubts that this thing could go probably that 200 plus uh, kilometers, 140 miles or so. And of course it's not the most accurate battery gauge, but it gives me a rough idea. My conclusion is I need smaller batteries and do shorter trips or a bigger trailer and do longer trips. Those are the two options right now because this many batteries on that little trailer just ain't doing it. This tent I'm using is a gear top. Got it from Amazon. Um, I thought it was pretty funny. Um, I've been using this for a year. Um, the company didn't provide it to me. I, I just got it off Amazon because it looked like what I needed. And and I get this unsolicited uh, <laughs> request for a product sponsorship review thing, and it's them. Uh, and they start off, of course, like, we love your videos, Steve. We love your camping videos. We've been watching you for a year. Um, we're wondering if you'd be interested in uh, us sending you a gear top tent to use. And I was like, Obviously, they're not watching the channel. I've used this a bunch of times, but uh, it's a little disingenuous. They always say that we're a big fan of your channel. They're not. Um, they want to sell more tents, but for what it's worth, it keeps me dry and it packs up small. So uh, the camo color could be a little more <laughs> camo, but uh, yeah, it's pretty quality from the times I've used it. Still airing the tires. This part of the hitch concerns me. If you see that, it's it's loosened off. That bracket there, no doubt from all the bouncing down the gravel roads. So I'll tighten that up and keep an eye on it. Throw a trip. A walk washer or something on there. I'm pretty sure I saw a black bear cub in the ditch on that last little stretch, less than a mile from where I was camped. Uh, I didn't get close enough before it ran into the woods, uh, but that means there's a mom nearby. So I'm kind of glad that um, I didn't fall asleep covered in uh, mustard and uh, smoky drippings all over myself. Uh, that would have uh, just been a little bit too tantalizing for them. So uh, about halfway to that uh, little salt and pepper restaurant and we're gonna check that out if it's open we're gonna eat that's for sure because i'm hangry
restaurant is closed, but our uh, nice little general store here had some snacky things I picked up. So we'll go down the road a bit, pull over, and have a nice little mid-morning um, picnic. Yeah, so unplug it, wait 30 seconds, hopefully that resets our batteries, and uh, we should be good to go. That did not do the trick, so I've undone all the things between the batteries here. Now I'll wait for a minute or two and then uh, give it another try, and then I'll try pedaling for a bit, I guess, um, but that doesn't seem very fun. No amount of messing around with the batteries uh, was able to get this to read 100% again until I went into the settings and changed it to expect a 24 volt load. So we may have one battery that's died uh, on us uh, and that we'll figure out when we get back. So we can hopefully limp back on 24 volts and we apparently have 100% power left when we're running it at 24 volts. So limp down the road to the pickup spot and let's go. Now I'm on the side of the road and I've lost all power and won't, won't even try to turn on. So I'm going to call my pickup, tell him to start driving out here. I'll keep biking on that way. Um, but I do have to give, of course, a big shout out to all the folks that have uh, contributed to the channel. So thank you guys very much. Um, I like to, you know, reinvest that into interesting projects like this type of thing um, and I don't like to go and get the you know two three thousand four thousand dollar e-bike type of thing because although it would be more reliable I'm trying to test out things that are attainable to a lot of people because you know who's gonna go out in this economy and, like drop two three grand on an e-bike um, you know it's I uh, not me <laughs> so I tried this we'll mess around with it some more um, it was a little trip to work the kinks out, and I've got a ride coming, so thank you all for watching. Please consider subscribing if you uh, enjoy these things. I was tempted to kind of hide a lot of the weight in the ditches and then come back for it in the future, but these batteries, provided they're not uh, messed up, um, they were pretty expensive. So uh, they're hopefully okay. Uh, they're multi-use for the boat, for the school bus, uh, for off-grid projects, the treehouse, so I use these batteries everywhere. And I hope I didn't bash them around too badly on the roads. And that's, uh, I guess, one of the things is it may not have been an accurate state of charge. Uh, I'm kind of hoping um, it's just an inaccurate battery meter and that they're, they just need to be recharged. So we'll find out when we get back, but as of this moment, I cannot recommend this um, this e-bike kit and that's half the reason um, that I don't do those sponsorship stuff that people send me or want to send me is because um, if the product's bad what am I supposed to say you know like send it back to you uh, but anyway I'll do some more experimenting with this see what's wrong with it and um, if it's if it's salvageable uh, I'll put it onto a better bike because I love this e-biking thing um, unfortunately just not with this particular setup so Steve out see you uh, next week Problem solved. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> no problem. <laughs>